The city of Smog has a reputation for favoring technological innovations over supernatural ones. This is partially as a result of the city's origins. The expatriates who immigrated from the nations of Nex and Gib found Alkenstar were mostly renegades and exiles. They skewed the strong magical ways of those traditions and of their wizard-ruled homelands in favor of a different approach to common social problems. The emergence of black powder technology from nearby Dungan Hold only exasperated newcomers' preference for alchemy and the machines over wands and spellbooks. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of the All Guns, No Glory podcast. We are here tonight. We are playing the Pathfinder 2nd Edition of the Outlaws of Elkenstar Adventure Path. In case you haven't caught on, in case you're not sure, in case you don't know, in case you haven't updated your Fantasy Grounds, like I just realized I just did. We left our... I really don't want to call them heroes. Outlaws. In a sewer. Well, they were using the sewers to escape. Wasn't it handy? I mean, like, conveniently written in that the boss, at the end of boss fight, like, literally had a map of the sewers so that you guys could navigate them easily. I mean, wasn't that nice? Well, I'm here to tell you that the adventure is always not that nice. I mean, look back at the last few sessions. I mean, ghosts and slimes and fight after fight after fight. But in the end, one cat and one mysterious barbarian with a bag full of friends and a bunch of new allies have made it through and are making their way back as we speak to the bullet and barrel. Unless, of course, you guys have, I don't know, some sort of detour in mind, something else pressing that anyone needs to do, or are we just literally, you know, running like mad to where we needs to be. Gentlemen, what are you doing right now? Definitely the running like mad part. That's the closest thing we have in the city at the moment to the safe house, to a safe house that I know of. What about the rest of you fine gentlemen? Anywhere we're going? Well, I'll, I'll just follow along, contemplating what was talked about last time. Apparently there's money on somebody's head and I don't know who she was talking about. Oh, sweet summer child. <laughs> <sighs> I've ridden this wagon. This, um, I'm gonna yeah, bolt and barrels probably. Hmm? Nice. Go ahead. You were saying, Andros? Oh, pardon me. I, uh, I've tagged along this far. I uh, may as well follow the wagon ride all the way through. All right. Um, I like that. I like that. Did you, so you're putting off the re return to the temple for the moment? Yeah, he, um, I think he's going to try and collect more information first and make up his own opinion before he reports back to the church. Okay. See, I like that. That's a priest with a scientific mind. Well, just because he's affiliated and they are his religion. Remember, he's not born and bred in Elkenstar. He's from Five Kings Mountains, made his way to Absalon, almost died there and discovered his faith through a tragic accident and was saved when no one else could by clerics and technologists of Bry. And tracking these, well, you know, you need new gears and new parts, you gotta go to the source. So he travels all the way to Elkenstar <laughs> and has inadvertently met you guys. Oh my, but that's okay. Back at the bullet and barrel. Um, everyone's still talking about next week's episode of uh, Hearts and Minds, Guns and Hats. <laughs> no? You guys don't even remember the name of that show? The stage show? No? Well, I'm going to tell you. We'll have to come back next week and see another... Uh... 
amazing episode. Oh, amazing with, amazing with quotations around it. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, I mean, you guys, you guys do make it back. Thank goodness. But um, my question for you all is um, you got a bag with like people and stuff, you know, sticking out of it. You know, do you see my concern? <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, <clears throat> my thought is we stick to the alleyways and when we get close to the bull and barrel, we uh, one of us should stick with the bag and either uh, Goss or myself should go speak to our employer as uh you know we're the uh i guess recognizable faces what's say the rest of y'all yeah i can stay by the bag that's fine with me okay goss you want to go in or you want me to these people are not for eating no there for uh, helping us get paid. Money is good. Um, do you, do you we're gonna we're gonna, have to, we're gonna talk about your dietary needs in a little bit, buddy. Um, because that statement was mildly distressing. Uh, but first, let's uh, let's go speak with our employer and uh, Charin and Andres. If you could stay here with the bags, we'll return post haste. Uh, we just want to make sure there is a place to store these bad boys literally um when uh when we get in there and if there's maybe a back door we could use don't want to drag a bag of bodies and gold into the front door okay. <sighs> scouting your way around the building there are there's a side entrance there are several doors on the south side of the building and then there's entrances on the east side or windows at least but doors on the south side Um, recalling an image of the bullet and barrel, do do we have an idea which? Let's see, east side, south side, east side's the main or uh, west side's the main entr entrance, correct? Mm hmm. Okay, so uh, my suggestion would be to go in through the double doors on the south side. So instead I'm of in the front of the bar, you're going to go into the side of the bar. Yeah. You're going to end up in the same room. I know. Okay. Well, there are other but doors. If I remember that... correctly, the stage, it, the stage is closer to like the front of the bar. Yeah. But if, you know, sneaking in and stuff. Okay. Uh, I mean, unless this, this other door further South, this single door to this little back room area. Oh no, that didn't lead anywhere. Maybe. Um, but if this this like single coming door here, side door is um, cool, but then you head to the back wall and you literally go along the thirty foot bar, filled with people, you know, like just do 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 right behind the bartender to get to the top of the you know the 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 walkway to come around into that little tiny room where you want to be because your your goal, as it were, if we used to say Bellamy is your you know is in here, in that little back room, yeah. No, I've only. I, I mean, I get it, but it's it's that, or we also walk through the. Just walk across everyone, and we don't know our level of wanted. So you still still thinking have that we, going in the back? Have we seen any? Oh, we'll just or go through the front the door then. Door? It seems fine. Yeah. Besides, who's wanted? A bunch of dudes in magical hats. That all look different than you, right? <clears throat> it's not an issue. Okay. Right. Okay. In Maybe. the front, in the front door, you go. There is someone. Uh, the bartender nods and just kind of cocks his head towards that back room, like you guys have been expected for the last, you know, forty-eight hours. <laughs> you, guys are kinda, <laughs> you know, you are kind of late. <laughs> now, in our travel here in the sewer when you guys got topside both Shurni the oracle 
and I want to say Pedro, Paulo, the Bard, Pilo, <laughs> Pilo, <laughs> that other guy. Um, they all have business elsewhere, like things they want to check in, and they're the just like, you know, we'll meet up, meet you at the bar, that kind of thing, a little later. And since neither one of them were like original quest given, makes sense. Uh, Charwin arrived with the champion and is now sort of come attached to the main group. And now we've picked up this cleric who's saying, you know, church can wait. Um, now, did you two original gangsters want to leave those two in the bar and like prep Phoebe and settle up and do whatever and then bring them in as new help? Or just bring them in going, these are the guys without their help. You know, we wouldn't be here, so they're in this now, or you, know, wh you guys want to play it. My thought is to bring them in with us, All right. but I'm also open to... No, it's honorable, as opposed to like... Room. Yeah? Okay. As opposed to like, you know, taking your cut from the first job and then going, mm -hmm. okay! <laughs> right? Right. Right. Okay. So, um, that being said, uh, once you guys get to the back room where sound from out front is, you know, a little bit more muffled, uh, you do sit down. Like I said, there's a bar here. You guys can help yourself to a drink. You know, you've barely had time to clean up. You smell like the sewer, that kind of thing. But to your credit, you didn't dick around. You got here as quick as you could and you have the wounds, the scars and the sewer smell to prove to prove it you didn't like take the money and run off on a bender for three days root tooting, short and shooting and then show up going oh yeah phoebe uh you know what i mean <laughs> no i'm just saying like i'm gonna take your stink speaks well of you <laughs> i'm gonna take a little of the whiskey i'm gonna take a little whiskey on my fingers and dab it on my neck on both sides um because it's got to smell better than the sewer and it's not really going to do anything but you know man's got to try okay i'm going I'm going with the straight sewer sewer smell. <laughs> All right. So, um, that said, um, she slides in, closes the door, takes an eager step forward, and then takes a step back after smelling yell. And then starts looking around the room and says, um, right, before we get down to business, let's pay what's owed, shall we? I'll be needing those hats back. And, he, and she's pointing at Charwin and the Dwarven Cleric, obviously assuming that they are, you know, your dudes wearing hats, not brand new dudes. Oh, oh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. These are some um, uh, mercenaries that we done picked up while we were out there in the scrapyard. Uh, they're they're good folk. They're very helpful. Um, this one's got a few screws loose. This one has his screws pretty tightened on. Uh, I'll point with the screws loose at Charwin and Andres with the, the tightened screws. Um, you know, they, they, they done helped us when uh, we lost some folk. Uh, as uh, I'll reach into the bag and pull out one of the arms, just like wave it a little bit. Not like, you know, severed, but, you know, pull up an arm and wave it around a little bit. As you can tell, we had some um, losses. Mm. But your hats. Yes. Uh, okay. I'll pull the hats out of the bag, too. You uh, might want them to air out a bit. Showing her grit as a dwarf, she comes over takes the bag of holding from you, reaches in, and there's like the tongue one way and the closed eye, like she's thinking hard about something, and then pulls out the chest without having to pull out a person onto the table. Sees that it's still locked. Excellent. Excellent. Well. I'm assuming... You boys are interested in getting paid. A deal is a deal. I promised you each 25 gold or 250 silver in your worth as your payment for this job. Now, assuming I open this chest and it's not empty, then I'd say we have a deal. 
Anyway, she looks at you warningly. If you open that chest and it's empty. Uh, I'm going to say, if you open that chest and it's empty, I'm going to be a, a, a mite pissed myself. She um, says, excuse me, I got to get that little light and a buzzer on the wall. She goes over and she picks up a handle and it's like a, a big uh, funnel with a tube. And she puts it to her ear and like the old tin can phones. You know, she just listens for a minute and you hear this tiny little, like someone's at the other end of the actual hose going, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Ah, fine. Puts it down. She says, um, well, it seems our immediate means to open this is out at the moment. She says, but I'm a woman of my word. Anyway, she reaches under the table and pushes a button and like a, a awning in the middle pops open and lifts up and there are four little bags of coins there you are now would you boys like me to send two of those bags to the next of kin of the gentleman that fell or are you looking to uh, shake these gentlemen in on our previous deal doesn't matter to me I think we should, I think we should send some money to the next kin of these folk, but. She says, I'll tell you what, those boys do what they're getting into. And, you know, I'm sure they have gear and stuff on them that I could liquidate for a proper barrier. I will reach out to their families, what I can find on them. I'll look after that. Uh, it's best uh, that you guys uh, aren't oh. carting around bodies. You know what I mean? Like now the bodies are here, let me, you know, look after it quietly as opposed to. <laughs> What are we going to do with these bodies? Let's have shots and talk about it, you know. How about you take care of the bodies? We'll take care of the cash. That seems like a fair exchange. She looks at him like, didn't I just say that? But I like him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. What about you, short, right. wide, well mechanical, handsome? I don't uh, quite think that I deserve uh, payment. I, I, our agreement was more of a. I'm going to kick him in the shins. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm going to shoot him a look too, and just be like, right. "Bro," and 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 reach over, and go. Shut up. Very well. He, he did plenty of work. He gets his money. Think of all the good you could do with the church with that money. Do you actually have like a notable holy symbol like embroidered in the clothes or the, the 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 cog on a chain or anything that's like obviously denoting you of the faith besides your parts? Uh, the shield. Oh, the shield. Okay. If you're carrying a shield emblazoned with it, then we're going to assume that you're of the faith. She says yeah. you can always tithe it. That's the intent then. All right. Good well, on well, you. like some of it, right? You can keep, keep a little, but yeah. like tithe some of it. Yeah, gentlemen, you can obviously respect in the morning, whatever you've chosen to spend it on. I don't want any quarrels within my new team. Speaking of which, do you have any questions about how everything went down? And I'd like to hear the full story. Well, we got to the bank. Things went sideways a little quick. Um, I, I was going to do a dissolve. <laughs> like you say we tell her. <laughs> that's, that's a good way to start. Things went sideways real quick. And then we showed up stinking of uh, gunpowder, sewage, and shit. Well, let me pour you boys a drink. <laughs> she goes over and gets whiskey and... Uh... Mm. She swirls the dregs of her whiskey in her glass, downs a drink, and stands finally. Unholsters her shotgun in one fluid motion, then sets the firearm on the bar counter next to her. Well, now, I suddenly have a little bit of dirt, if not a lot of dirt, on each of you, don't I? Armed robbery, obstruction of justice, evading the law, quite a rap sheet. She leans against the bar and stretches casually. I guess this means I should tell you something about me. I'm not just a saloon owner, for starters. She removes her holster and sets it on the bar next to her shotgun. 
In fact, I work for a very powerful person, someone you are no doubt familiar with. She puts her hand into her vest, a place that her, that her holster had covered, and palms something, and then extends her closed hand. In it is a small signet ring that exhibits the distinct symbol of the Grand Duchy of Alkenstar. Does Grand Duchess Trieta Ricita? Ricia? Mm. Damn, I practiced that. Does the Grand Duchess Trieta Ricia ring a bell? She cocks an eyebrow at you all. Yeah, I thought so. A cocky grin. Dunsmith can hardly contain her smirk, enthralled with her own theatrics. But then she sighs. This means, and what this means is, since you work for me, you actually work for the Grand Duchess. <laughs> Slips the ring back into her pocket. What? Surprised? Trust me, it's good to have friends in high places. Besides, now that we're all formally acquainted, it's about time we began the real fun, don't you think? So, so are, are you telling me you're the upper fuzz pitting us against the shitty fuzz? I'm telling you, tall, dark, and furry, that I work for the Grand Duchess. You know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. You ever see a spy oh, movie where they'll they'll never say they're a spy, but they're like, I work for the government. <laughs> you know? Even, oh, even I'm, Tom Cruise like, I work for the American government. Bond, I work for the British government. They never actually say, I work for MI6 or I work for the CIA. Oh, know. You know. Burn notice. I'm actually a subcontractor that worked for the government for a short period of time. <laughs> oh, okay. Well now you're my no, subcontractors. Um, uh, no, I uh I, I I was trying to imply like she's the CIA making us fight the cops <laughs> not at all it's more like she's um a musketeer working for the crown and she's enabled you know she's enlisted you guys as um you know assets disposable ones but assets nonetheless i mean what is my business but dealing in disposalities bullets mm -hmm. um well that is that is downright shocking uh, I would imagine the Grand Duchess has something against Loveless, and which is why she has compiled this little menagerie of individuals together. She has nothing against Loveless personally. She has something against corrupt law enforcement in her duchy. About corrupt financiers lining their pockets off the blood, sweat, and tears of her people. The Grand Duchy has the common wealth and common good in all she does, you can trust me on that. Hmm. 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 That's fair. That's fair. So, uh, what what's gonna happen? Are we getting are we getting any sort of like clearing of our record? No, 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 not at all. You will. I need you to actually keep the facade of outlaws, since. Um, there is no, since you were, you know, obviously framed or criminals or whatever, you know, Loveless and Mugland, who are the law, have it in for you. There is no smoothing things over the, with them. Especially not now, where we hit Mugland where it really hurts. No, I think better that we continue to play the game. Shake them up. Shake things loose. She says, I'll tell you what. If you're interested in those hats of disguise, I will let you purchase them from me. But I will toss in this lovely, convenient... An oh so handy bag of holding type one for free. As soon as I have a chance to empty its morbid contents, you, you understand. Understandable. Um This seems like an appealing prospect, folk. What 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 say the rest of you? I don't want to be the only one doing the jabber in today. Well, it sounds pretty good to me. A bag like that? You still on the treasure. <laughs> you 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 just you just kind of left the statement hanging there, bud. Um, <laughs> no, I love it. He's still uh, on, he's still on what's relevant material in front of him, not the you know the overtures of what we're gonna do. That's good. Sorry. Uh, 
the rest of our merry band of ne'er do wells that apparently are doing well. That's confusing. I'm just, content to just sit back and watch for now. I I I need to make my mind up before we commit any further. Well, this uh, this involvement of the Grand Duchy, I huh, I did not see that coming. Um, let me tell you something. Like I said, it's good to have friends in high places, but you're going up against c- corrupt shield marshals and a deputy, Loveless. She is a cold-blooded killer. Firmly embedded in Muglin's pocket. She's one of his favorite assassins. Not just because she's got the law on her side, but because she's a crack shot, too. Granted, not disputing that. Unfortunately, though, the church can't have a representative showing up with, uh, in undue places. I see, I see. You want to protect the reputation of your church. See, I see it as people see you as a might reputable and cheap pours some really good whiskey and brings it over to you personally, leans in and shows a bit of bodice and says, uh, I'd say that's the perfect cover. Why you might keep these, uh, you know, shall we say rag tag bunch of friends of mine, uh, at least looking like you're all in straight and air as long as they're in your company. Shimmy, shimmy, shake, hands you the drink. Let's be, com- let's be completely honest. Every good band of ne'er do wells that do well needs a spiritual center. Without that spiritual center, we might decide to go astray. I don't know. Maybe we're going to go ask Ergothoa for help. You two, a warning glance like you're hitting that a little too hard on the nail. I got him. I got this. You know, (laughs) let the dwarf convince the dwarf. (laughs) But I can tell you. Um, no one's come looking for you yet. I reckon those hats did the trick. As long as you didn't say anything about me or this saloon. Nay. None that I can think of. And don't worry about it. You can lay low here for a few days till this all blows over. I happen to have a little bit of a functioning alchemy lab in the basement. It's going to come in right handy in the future, especially for your next job. But... You boys could use it, shall we say it? Yeah, (laughs) I figured. Uh, It's also a good place for uh, laying low and hiding people. Not to mention this establishment can, uh, you know, uh, feed and liquor you up. A discount price, of course. That's all the best things. No. That's all the best things. You buy the food. You buy the liquor. Honey, I am trying to run a business here. If I start giving out freebies, well, then I'm going to look sus on now, aren't I? One must maintain the cover. She says, looking you right in the eye. To the hilt. You understand me? No exceptions. No sideways. I'm just a humble proprietor. Helping out a few folks. And giving them a good rate on whiskey and food. But no freebies. That would look sus. I'm going to lean over to Charwin. I think that was suggestive. Right. How would it look when you boys come up here once in a while and, you know, stuff your faces in my bar or, you know, have the patrons see people taking food to the back and it just disappears? No, no, no. I've been doing this for a long time, honey. Trust me. If you want to play the game, I'll be a coach. I'll lay down some rules. And if you can't hack that, well, that's no skin off my nose. You can go about your way. <clears throat> she, but you'll never speak of this again. I want to lean in real close. I'm already practically nose to nose to you. <laughs> he like gets up yeah. on his tippy toes and just puts his yeah. forehead against yeah. hers. That's right. I just want to look her square in the eye. Yeah. And just go. Okay. Are we trying to intimidate or is that agreeable? No, we're trying to intimidate a little bit. Okay, give me intimidation. That work. <laughs> Natural <laughs> one. <laughs> so that ain't working very well. She says, uh, I also got medicine for whatever's going on with you right there. You know, I'm sure uh, enough polysporin or uh, neosporin or some kind of sporin might fix you up right. Again, 
at a good, reasonable rate. But don't worry. Whiskey's good, food is cheap, only a couple coppers here and there. I trust if you boys behave yourselves, you won't burn through all that money too quickly. Hell no. She leans back, satisfied that, you know, with what's what is what. Now, how I about personally. It, how about your next job? Hmm? Should we discuss that a little? I'm interested. You have you have piqued my curiosity. Oh, that's well, dangerous. Since this one is so hungry, I'll just take that as the rest of you are hungry for more, eh? Well, now that I know you can work together, he looks at the two of you and then the bag. <laughs> doesn't look at the two of you guys. Literally, when she says works together, Atticus is <laughs> <just> like, mm -hmm. <laughs> And more importantly, produce results. Without backing down, she says, looking at Gauze. I have just a job in mind. Which we can start in four days. Or sooner, if you're feeling able. That sounds flexible. We can do it. Why would, why would you say it was such a flexible date? four days or even sooner tell you what i'll let you boys rest for the day and the night we'll discuss xp versus milestones see if you boys even level heal up your wounds have a drink relax buy something to eat looking at gods again <laughs> and i will see she says making you know there's the the spectacles testicles wallet and watch the you know the Catholic crossing, right? She does uh, a gesture that kind of goes from armpit under chin to armpit, like a half wheel cog, and then just throws up four fingers, like as if they're a spike. It's a half cog thing. I'm improvising. She makes some kind of dated dwarven holy symbol of, uh, you know, Andros gets it. Because <laughs> I said you do. He's just laughing at me. Because <laughs> I said you do. Cleric, he gets it. Um. Anyway, she leaves with the bag and the chest. You have your money, and you have a private bar and a private room to drink and discuss your plans in without ears overhearing. And you know, um, you're assuming that you could be led to said place to rest and and or you know alchemy uh, place to play around in soon and on the morrow you know we could talk about uh, next mission or maybe you'll just wander off in the night who knows well folk what are we what are we thinking i'm i'm planning on sticking around that's just what other prospects do i have at the moment well let's talk about the oliphant in the room what's a screw and why is it loose and why is it tight sometimes That is a shockingly lucid question from you. Um, well, what about the rest of you? You sticking around? I'm sticking. Ah, uh, the way I see it, you rescued me once. You're up one on me. I have to pay you back. Just hey, know and that the church is not involved. What, uh, how you all feel about working for the duchy itself? As long as she pays. That's fair. This, this is a solid statement. Charwin, I assume you have something elegant. Sure. I, I understood this whole con conversation. Um, I don't have a problem with her being a, a duchess. Fair enough. I imagine the, the church would at least like to do the good that she's implying will be doing. Yes, most assuredly. But what is it that she wants with us, though? Like, what, 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 what are we here to accomplish? Well, I'd imagine if she's looping us in, then it's something to do with muggling causing corruption in the city and... Because she knows we all, we got problems with him.
Well, I think for the eve, we should uh, we should have a, a crap, a clip, and a cup of something heavy. What about you guys? I'm down. All right. Forwarding to the next day, shall we say? Sure. Okay. Um, your uh, minor wounds, one hit point for Goss, seven from Andros, can be easily remedied with Andros's spells on the next morning, you know, since we're not just running off to a mission as well as a good night's rest. So putting putting all back for, for hit points. Um, this adventure is gritty, but I still feel, um, and maybe just because we've leaned into XP in the other Pathfinder show, I feel for you guys, it might be a little bit more rewarding if you guys, we go with the milestone approach. So congratulations, y'all level. Woo! Woo! Yeehaw! Um, and we must start the training montage. But on top of training, you guys are going to spend a couple days reconning and this and that. But let's get back before you guys start digging up and pushing all kinds of buttons to the adventure at hand. The next day, you know, bright and early, uh, Phoebe meets you in the same room. And if you guys are unable to, uh, you know, answer your own questions, you may want to direct some of those questions at her. So, so. Ass assuming that you had, so we're not having a repetition of the last 10 minutes, okay? She starts by answering the question of why she works for the Grand Duchess. Well, we go back a long time before she was even in politics. If you can believe it anyway, I do her a lot of favors. It's no secret among rulers that you can't accomplish everything with a degree with decrees and signatures and tariffs. Sometimes you need someone to get their hands dirty on the ground floor, if you know what I'm talking about. That's where I come in. And now this is where you're gonna come in. Hmm. So we know why, but that that's more of the what and the the win? Well, I know you may but, have some misgivings about working for the Duchess, but just consider yourself working for me. Look, this is all going to go, this is all going to ruin all of Muglin's plans. And you want to ruin him good, don't you? You want to take this job, trust me. That That is that is a uh, part of the concern, is dealing with Muglin's bullcrap. Uh, Alright, so what, what, what does she want with us, specifically? the duchess if uh she could get any any gunslingers and cowpokes and um you know heck contract the pathfinders or something <laughs> um the pathfinders have a habit of collecting and then deciding themselves sharing secrets you see this dials back again to muglin and loveless it was because of you being framed Accused rightly or wrongly, no matter what you did, but you having beef with those two, what makes you interest to her, which means it makes you interest in prime candidates for me. You see, Mugland and Loveless desperately want the formula for Pyronite. No doubt some of, for some shady backroom deal they're hoping to make. So far, they haven't left a shred of evidence about their plans, but it's only a matter of time until they slip up. When that happens, You'll have your chance to make things right, whatever that means to you. In the meantime, we got to make sure neither of them achieves their goals, which is why we have to get Mr. Gattaby, the inventor of said Pyronite, to safety. You see, what the Duchess wants with it, honestly, is to bury it. Having that stuff out in the world is just too dangerous. If it falls into the wrong hands, a whole lot of people are going to get hurt. Gatteby's been too wrapped up in his work itself to see how much potential his inventive his invention has to destroy lives and even possibly a country. Thankfully, that's the same reason why he hasn't sold it. 
He cares more about getting the Pyronite right than making a profit. The best thing we can do is to get Gadaby somewhere safe. And she stomps her foot on the floor, as if implying the basement, that very alchemy lab that we mentioned earlier. So he can continue his research well away from anyone who wants to steal it. Have we heard of Pyronite? She says, um, hmm. Then let me start at the beginning. She begins pacing around the back room as she talks. She's animated and enthusiastic, clearly firing on all cylinders at this point, and still reveling in the success from the gold tank reserve heist that you guys pulled off for her yesterday. For this next job, the Duchess has asked us to secure some very precious cargo. She slides a broadsheet across the table, a poster av advertising Vashon Gadaby's Pyronite Expedition. Exhibition at the Blyther College. This poster includes a woodprint of a hiried man in his 50s, presumably Gadaby, and some hyperbolic comp copy promoting the once-in-a-lifetime explosive showcase. I'm sure you've all heard of Gadaby and his pyronite, no? Yeah? Well, it's been the talk of the town ever since he leveled half of Blyther's largest auditorium. Well, Gadaby's invention has gotten him a lot of admirers recently. Everyone in Alkenstar wants a piece of the man, or at least a piece of his new invention. Thankfully for us, Gadaby's turned down everyone who's offered to hire him or to buy the Pyronite formula from him. He's been able to hold off his prospectors from the safety of his own home so far, but he can't hold down that puny brick mortar fortress forever. Now, fortunately, the Grand Duchess and I have managed to convince Gadaby he's better off here, in the saloon's workshop, where no one will know his location. He's game, but now we just got to get to him from a point A to a point B. And that's where you come in. We need you to meet Gadaby at his house on the other side of the city. Bring him back to the bullet and barrel. Once he's here, I can keep him safe. Simple enough job, right? Got Get Gadaby, bring him back here. I'm paying you 50 gold apiece to bring him back here in one piece this time. She pinches the bridge of her nose like she's just remembered something unpleasant. Oh yeah, as part of our arrangement, Gadaby made us promise that he'd be able to make a stop along the way here, near Ironside Quarter at some abandoned brewery. Got me why, but that's the deal. Stop at a place called the Yeast of All Brewery, once you've gotten Gadaby. Besides, it might be a good place for you to lie low if you need to catch your breath. Anyway, we don't have much time to get this done. Muglin and Loveless are likely to make a grab for Gadaby soon. Muglin's been moving money around and paying off some shady folk. By my estimations, we have about four days to get Gadaby before our cargo is compromised. Now, you guys remember that Loveless was talking about doing something in five days when you guys were in the sewers? Mm-hmm. Be ready for Muglin's mercenaries, Loveless street gangs, or anyone else under our rival's thumbs. She pulls a rolled up map of Alkenstar from a nearby shelf and unfurls it on the table. Oh, that's an image of Alkenstar. One second. <laughs> I'm trying to find my map. I'm the map. I'm the map. Where's the map? There we go. So now you guys actually own official image of this and can, you know, ask me to pull it up for you all at any given time. Voila. Now, Gadaby's home is top center somewhere in Oosterlai Heights. And the Barrel and Bullet Saloon are almost dead center of the map. But he wants to, like, veer off all the way through Smokespog to the, to the Ferris court, Quarter before he comes here. So it's not exactly a straight run, but it's not a bad run. You don't have to cross the river at least. Now, you should scout your route before you pick up Gadaby, just to make sure it's safe. I believe you have four days or less to do that, your choice. She removes a cameo brooch and sets it on top of the map. Show this to Gadaby, so he knows you're working for me when you show up and doesn't think you're working for someone else.
Is that clear? <sighs> Does that clear everything up? Think so. Is so, he just gonna? Oh, go ahead. So if we're looking to stop the pyronite from hitting the market, why don't we just eliminate Gatabi? Um. Pirate is very dangerous, yeah, destroys lives, and and I understand that sometimes the church have the, the need of the many outweighs the need of the few, but we're not assassins. We're government agents. Besides, why kill a man who obviously has a brilliant mind and deny the world of the next great invention? I thought a cleric of Bree would actually have common sense to think that way. Not when it comes to firepower. That's way too dangerous. So you think we should just kill him? We should stop him from creating the invention. He's already created it. Blew up half of him to uh, an atrium. I assure you, the Duchess wants to bury this, but she is going to let the man finish things to completion, and we're going to keep it out of anyone's hands. But just killing the man? No. What if he had a backup plan? What if he had a relative? What if, if, in case of my death letter, deliver death letter, deliver this formula to, and it's out in the world? No, we need God to be alive, safe, one piece, and with us. Also, I'd like to, I'd like to pick the man's brain. Of course, I'm sure he would. Well, I guess you want to know a little bit more about Gadaby himself. He's harmless. Explosive grains of sand notwithstanding. Bit of a shut-in recently, of course. But he's whip-smart when it comes to keeping intruders out of his home. So you better watch your step when you arrive on his doorstep. He knows about our arrangement to get him to safety. But he's always deep deck and neck deep in his work. And he forgets just about anything isn't written down in his formula book. So don't be surprised if the door is locked and when you get there, shoot. He might not even remember you're coming. But... Are are you telling me we are about to have to go to this man's fortress of a home and deal with his traps to rescue him? She shrugs. It's kept everybody away and kept him safe so far. <sighs> but since you boys are good at improvising, looking at you, Bellamy, and you guys, and then glancing at your new friends, you know, like you literally pulled people <laughs> in the middle of a job. It's kind of impressive, really. You know, you didn't quit. Two guys dead. You just got your own assets. I work for the Duchess. You two work for me. Those two work for you two, and so on and so on and so on. By the time we get to Charwin, he's only getting five gold, but that's okay. <laughs> 50, 50, 50 gold. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Depending right. on some contractor, the some contractor. Took usually handles the gold. I, I'm not sure what to do without him. You, you'll get a full share, bud. Well, so we got four days to get this inventor and bring him here. Lest his invention cause endless trouble. Get into the wrong hands. You should scout your route between Steam Haven and Ferris Quarter before you pick up the cargo. There's no good sewer right. access between here and there. So you'll have to bring him overland through the city itself. You'll run into trouble, no doubt. No doubt about it. Goons hired by Muglin for sure. You should be able to catch your breath at the yeast of all brewery before completing the final leg of trip, though. I believe it's abandoned. A man wants to go to an abandoned bro the fudge. And if he does happen to pick up some kind of a letter dressed to whom it may concern Andros, that is not licensed to kill the man. Are we clear on that? Understood. Ma'am, remind you. She he, she leans in and speaks to you directly in Dwarven. Who speaks Dwarven here, besides Andros? Me. Okay. Um, as much fun it is to like, right? GM wants to speak. Pull down da 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 da, da Dwarven, and the next thing I say, and it's like da da da. Who? So, Fantasy Grounds. I put this in the chat. It says Atticus Bellamy Smoke Fur and Andrus understood this. The rest of you guys got some Lord of the Rings gobbledygook. <laughs> this is what she says to him. 
So tell me what your reactions are, boys. Um, I'm going to try and hide my reaction with deception. Okay. Um, but my ears are going to go straight back and my tail is going to puff up four times its size. Okay. Why you make it sound like I'm threatening him. I'm not hiding it very well with nine. nine. (laughs) Just (laughs) pretends he's coughing on his whiskey. (laughs) It's good. I will try the same. Okay. Oh, looks like uh, looks like Eric is typing Dwarven back at me. How cool is that? Yes, and just will uh, reply in Dwarven. So Goss, who didn't understand Dwarven, just pretends that he didn't understand Dwarven. Even with your eleven, you 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 nail it. <laughs> I'll tell you this though, her body language, right? She, you know how she like puts her leg up, like puts one boot up on the bar type of thing, right? She plants a boot on his chair. You know, right between his legs, leans in, and while shaking her booty at him, you know, does seem to have a quiet, if not serious, tone. Anyway, I'm pretty sure it's, remind you, and from what I'm looking at Eric with 11, this is not exactly what he said, but it's kind of pretty sure he just nods once and, you know, understands what, you know, where she's come from. So some sort of tentative agreement might be really might be released whether uh, he disappears at night with her or you know he's just going to behave himself and not kill anybody. Killer cleric so on the loose. I love it. If it's if it's in dwarven, <laughs> she says this thing and he just looks her in the face and goes, "Oh, <laughs> here you go." Bellamy can't help but like spit that out and then it's like so he doesn't sound like speaking dwarven. It goes back to coughing. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> So, um, gentlemen, are there any other questions? She flutters her eyelashes Uh, at y'all. Page 25, it is in your party loot. She will pay you 50 for bringing Gatabi back here in one piece. Funny, she didn't say alive. I don't really don't want to like get on Eric's side here, but she <laughs> said one piece, which I think means alive. Breathing or something. Now we got a cleric to ensure that. And the healer is actually talking about, oh, it'd be easier to kill him. I love this. This is so funny. <laughs> Rai <laughs> is nothing if not practical. God of invention. <laughs> Goddess of innovation and invention, you know. Yeah. Well, we gotta stop this one. So. I love how he follows the goddess of invention, but he's basically the Brotherhood of Steel. Mm. So instead of starting the next chapter, um, how would you guys like to do a little leveling? Or have you possibly leveled your characters already? I have not. I also have not. I have not? The have I and have, have not. not, but okay. I have ideas. You have ideas. I have ideas. All right then. 